Welcome to Jumping Bomb Audio. Welcome back to Jumping Bomb Audio, our 40th show as a podcast. Very exciting. A show all about the world of Joshi wrestling. There's a lot to talk about this week happening in the crazy world of Joshi wrestling. And here joining me again is Kelly. Kelly, happy Labor Day weekend. Ah, happy Labor Day weekend. I I forgot. In all honesty, I always forget all Monday holidays. I just know it's like, okay, this is the the day we don't get mail. All right. Sure. Uh, So, as always, you can follow us on Twitter at JBombAudio. Uh, We were active uh, last weekend. I tweeted, live tweeted the stardom show that they put up live on YouTube. So you can go there, check out all my thoughts. You can also follow me at Tay Mambo, and you can follow Kelly at Comic Geek Kelly on Twitter. Subscribe to the show on your podcast app of choice. If your podcast app of choice is Apple Podcasts, give us a five-star rating and review. We would really appreciate it a lot. Or you can donate to us at redcircle.com slash shows slash jumping bomb audio. And let's just dive right in. We've got a lot of news to cover right up the top. A lot of things going on in the world in the last two weeks. Uh, I guess we will start with some movement, I guess I'll call it. Some talent movement. Uh, The first big announcement of the last two weeks came from Marvelous, uh, where it was announced that Hibiki... Makoto Shindo and Mei Hoshizuki would be leaving Marvelous. Uh, Their contracts were ending on August 31st. It was originally thought, uh, people assumed that that meant that they were probably going to another company, uh, possibly stardom, uh, but it was recently reported on the Wrestling Observer forums that The three of them had been fired for disciplinary reasons. Um, That was all the detail that was given, and that they would not be going to stardom. Um, So that is interesting. Marvelous also released a statement on their website, which I will read. This is translated. Uh, Machine translated seems pretty accurate, but if there is anything slightly inaccurate in here, I do apologize. Uh, to all our supporters and other concerned parties, Makoto Shindo, Meiho Shizuki, and Hibiki, the above three wrestlers have expressed their intention to leave the company. After much discussion, each of them said that they would like to test their individual abilities, gain experience, and improve themselves. Each of the three players has a strong will. There will be no penalties or penalties incurred by leaving the marvelous before the end of the contract period we hope that they will continue to grow and develop elsewhere and although it is with a heavy heart we have accepted the resignation of these three wrestlers Uh, we would like to thank all of you who have been supporting us the number of wrestlers has decreased drastically but although we have lost a lot of wrestlers in one fell swoop Marvelous is determined to push forward without losing heart. It will take some preparation to establish the new system, but we plan to announce the new system in person at the Shinkiba First Ring, a no-fan live broadcast on September 10th. Until then, we ask for your understanding that we will be taking a break from social media out of consideration for the feelings of our dedicated athletes. So, Kelly, an interesting 
uh, situation here. Uh, what are you, what are your thoughts? Something isn't adding up here. Like the that statement does not match the report that they were fired for disciplinary reasons, like at all. So like I someone they're either covering for something that happened or like that report's wrong. I I don't know because like this this whole situation is really weird, and especially if they're not going to start them. Like where are they gonna go? It does Mm. seem strange. I mean, I think at this point they're not going to start him because I'm not sure that stardom would work up, you know, would be like, ah, I know what we'll do to really hype up the debut of these three wrestlers. We'll go on the Wrestling Observer uh, forums and, you know, say they're not coming. So, like, do we know who the source of that was? Like, I think it was Sonny. Okay. um, Who does the English... Uh, start a Twitter account, but I'm not entirely sure. I don't know if that, I don't know if I read that or if I misread that. Um, I mean, I would understand if Marvelous had said whatever happened and I have no, I have no idea. And I, you know, I'm not going to like guess what happened, but if it was a thing where they did something they weren't supposed to do, they got in trouble and maybe um, whoever at Marvelous, Chagusa, whoever it was, said to them, you know, you have to leave or else, you know, essentially you can leave and we'll put out this statement that essentially says, oh, you want to look elsewhere um, as sort of a safe face to not say, okay, on your way out, the company will like bury you. Yeah. I do know also Meho Shizuki had some statement somewhere. I don't know if she tweeted it out, um, but she said she is not looking to go to another promotion at this time. And she is going to take some time. Um, that may have been a tweet. It was, tr- it was uh, translated by Shigio on Twitter. Who's a great source for uh, Japanese translations into English. So that is what she said. So that also makes it seem like something happened and, you know, Marvelous may just be saying, you know, we wish them luck in the future and we hope that they grow instead of saying, oh yeah, these people broke the rules and we, you know, don't like them and we want them out. Yeah. Like the, cause the statement is so nice, but I guess like, I don't know. That's the difference between the way Japanese handle business and like the American wrestling business where it would just be like Brett Lauderdale on Twitter saying, fuck that guy. Yeah. And I don't know if it is, you know, maybe they do pop up somewhere else, but then also, you know, it's a thing where marvelous is working with, you know, all these different, they're working obviously with stardom. They're doing some things obviously with Sendai girls so they have connections. So it's also a question of if they had done, you know, whatever they've done, do you want someone going to another promotion and saying, oh, hey, I'm here. Can I join? Yeah. Like, like, are they blackballed, essentially? You just got fired from, you know, this company. I mean, I know Hibiki started out many years ago as a Diana trainee. That didn't work out. And she had come back. Um, and was renamed as part of Marvelous. Um, I don't know if that plays into it at all, but it's sort of a very, it's very strange because when it was first announced earlier this week, there was this feeling of, with a couple other things that we'll talk about next, it was like, oh my God, all these people are going to start them. Because as much as, you know, sometimes we go, oh, these people are leaving, wonder where they're going. 95% of the time, it seems in the last few years when someone says, oh, I'm leaving the promotion and I'm going somewhere else, it (laughs) turns out to be starting. Yeah. Yeah, like I would assume Hibiki ends up in maybe Sendai Girls? But like, I don't know. So that is something to, I guess, keep an eye on. Um, also will be interesting to see as Marvelous talked about, I don't know if on the 10th, they're going to debut more rookies. They are now down 
uh, three wrestlers now. Of course, they don't run that many shows, so it isn't a case of that they need, you know, the bodies. But I mean, it's three younger, talented wrestlers. I mean, Hibiki was sort of in a main event. She had sort of become the big heel of the promotion. I had always, as many people know from listening to this show, was a big fan of Mei Hoshizuki um, for many years. So it will be interesting to see. Maybe we see them pop up. Maybe they go away for a year and they maybe they show back up in Marvelous at some point. I don't know. Hard to say. Yeah, yeah super weird situation. The other uh, big departure news was Mirai Mayumi announcing that she will be leaving Tokyo Joshi. Uh, She had her last show this past week. This one is very interesting to me. Um, It's so funny because when all these people were announcing, you know, the Marvelous people announced, and then I think it was like a day or two later, uh, Mayumi announced that she was leaving Tokyo Joshi and it felt like, oh my God, are all these people going to stardom? Yeah, is there just out, a raid going? <laughs> yeah, it was like, oh my God, the thing that stardom really hadn't done, you know, back when Bushiroad bought them, took over, the whole thing was like, oh my God, they're just going to go out and they're going to get, you know, 15 of the best wrestlers from all these promotions and just kill these promotions, which didn't really happen. They took a couple, you know, Julia, they had the whole thing with Julia, which was very controversial, but that was only one person. You know, Suri was sort of more of a freelancer uh, type. Michael was from uh, Just Tap Out. So we really hadn't seen it and it felt like, oh, maybe this is the moment when they start doing that. And then, of course, we've now learned that the three are probably most likely not going to stardom. So now... (laughs) I was thinking, oh, Mayumi's showing up in stardom 100%. Now I don't know. Kelly, do you think that she's showing up in stardom? Do you think that she's... It's weird, I don't know, yeah. going somewhere else. I can't even think of, you know, I'm like, oh, she's going to go to Ice Ribbon? I don't know. Yeah, maybe? Seedling? Maybe? Like, yeah, I don't know. She, I don't know where she would fit into stardom, but then again, it's like, I don't know where half the people in stardom fit in stardom anymore, but... I... I think that she would probably fit a bunch of places, but my biggest uh, thing holding me back would be that, like, Seedling, she could fit very well in Seedling, but Seedling hasn't actually signed a person in, like, four years or something. Yeah, that's true. They have the rookies, which is sort of there, but a little bit different, but really, it was... You know, back when they were starting, it's really been that core roster of, I mean, Yoshiko, who's out currently, but Arisa and I, it was Sari for a while before she left, and then she came back, but she wasn't really ever signed because she was just waiting to go to WWE. Waiting to go to the retirement home. Yeah, and it's one of those, it's like, I guess it could be Ice Ribbon, it just seems like not really an ice ribbon thing to do no um so who knows maybe it it, you know it could be and you know they have been adding people as we'll talk about in a second so we will see i am i have to say on a you know personal level i am sort of bummed to see her leave i know that they had big hopes for her in tokyo joshi there was an interview with takagi where he talked about Um, her and Suzume and a couple other people as sort of the next generation of Tokyo Joshi wrestlers who are going to be challenging for the top titles and be at the top level. And it is a little sad to see her leave, although, you know, I don't begrudge her going to wherever she wants to go for whatever reason she wants to do that. But, you know, it's it's always fun seeing someone start with a promotion, grow with the promotion, and you know, reach the top and get very good. Yeah. And she was a good uh, addition to that roster just because she felt different than everyone else. She worked a different style. So that's kind of a big hit to Tokyo Joshi's future. Just missing that. Yeah. And it is, you know, and part of it could be that for many years, 
Tokyo Joshi was sort of the, you know, I don't think anyone was looking at Tokyo Joshi and going, oh my gosh, it's, you know, big competition. They were sort of off in their own, they sometimes feel sort of off in their own world doing their own thing. And now they've gotten a lot better. They have buzz. They have this roster that's growing and developing. And this could be a more frequent occurrence if you're making better wrestlers it's more likely that other promotions will want those wrestlers yeah it's it's weird because like with if you're leaving tokyo joshi and you're not going to stardom it kind of feels like a step down almost just in terms of like profile of the promotion yeah i mean that's that's totally true which is another reason why you know, and sometimes these things happen when it's like, I'm leaving, I'm going to another promotion. It feels like, why would you go anywhere except for start? That seems to be the place to leave to go. Yeah, like unless you're just like, hey, I want to go out and hone my skills and then come back an even better wrestler. Like, cool, fine. But I, I don't know. It Weird. It's the whole this and the, and the marvelous thing. It's just weird. Yeah, it's just a, a sort of like all over the map week because there was this you know the story of like okay all these people are leaving it's like oh oh my god they're going to stardom like here comes stardom is gonna you know start mowing down these things and i have to say that part of my fear comes from you know we can talk all about stardom and how these wrestlers are used and that's a different conversation but the fact that joshi wrestling got through you know, quote unquote, the worst of the pandemic and none of these companies shut down to me is very close to a miracle. Yeah. It's it, it kind of shocking. Yeah. Like it didn't really close many wrestling companies looking back on. I mean, we're still in the middle of it, but like it was nowhere near as disastrous to the wrestling industry as I thought it would be. Yeah, but it just seems like so many of these companies are sort of living in a permanently precarious position in terms of, you know, and Marvelous is sort of one. And I'm like, oh my God, they're losing three people. And as they said, they're like, this is a big, you know, our roster is shrinking suddenly very fast. And, you know, they're not losing a Roja, who's their big star or someone like Mio Mono or anyone like that. But yeah, I just sometimes worry that, you know, one of these moves, and not for Tokyo Joshi, who I think is fine, and they're backed by Cyber Agent, and they'll live on, but, you know, you sort of take, it's like a Jenga, and you take out one piece, and you don't know, but then the whole thing comes down. Um, yeah. And, you know, ends up being the thing that leads to this company, whatever. Because, you know, my hope for all of these companies is that they all do very well. I wish they were all sort of backed by a company like Bushi Road, who was, you know, giving them money and willing to, you know, take chances with the shows they run and running more shows and hiring more people and paying better. Uh, but unfortunately, that is uh, not not the situation. I wish there were 15 more Tony Khans who uh, really <laughs> like Joshi Wrestling who could come to Japan and <laughs> start some companies. There we go. Well, we'll talk to Tony and we'll see if we can get him to like make donations to each company. I think, I think that could work. <laughs> uh, where do I want to go next? I guess I'll briefly just say Yuri, who was um, in just tap out. There were some thoughts that she had, well, she had left just tap out. There were some thoughts she would show up in stardom. Uh, she showed up recently in Gambare pro. So that is a, you know, we say, oh, everyone goes to uh, stardom, but there's uh, one with Yuri ending up in Gumbari Pro. Um, Yuna Manase is there, so maybe building some Joshi, sort of a Joshi company there. And I know Takagi had talked about, someone had asked him, I don't even remember, some interview maybe a year or longer ago. He had said, mentioned that they were interested in having a second a sort of Joshi promotion under this this uh, cyber agent umbrella. So maybe that's a way, you know, get some people in Gambare and 
you know, do a little bit uh, a Joshi promotion there that's a little bit different than what they're doing in Tokyo Joshi. Yeah, I feel like I've seen something, some mention of like Gunbare Joshi shows. So I, it makes sense that they'll want to beef up their roster. And this does feel like a vertical movement for Yuri. Like, I, I wouldn't say that Just Tap Out is a big promotion or anything. It's it's more a school than anything. So like, I and it's not like Gunbari is big, but I'd say it's slightly higher profile than Just Tap Out. Yeah, Just Tap Out at this point feels sort of like a place where you develop your skills and you just wait for someone, some other company to sign you. But then yeah. seemingly that, I don't know how, but they seemingly debut people all the time to sort of like no effect, like they lost Micah and then now they have uh, Inaba there. And so it just seems like a a well-oiled system of like, we know that we're going to lose people. So we're going to keep developing people and, you know, some people will leave, but we'll have people right after. So yeah, it does sort of have the feeling of a training, like a training ground for other places. Yeah. Um, And like, it makes sense. Taka's a great teacher. So like, I'm sure people are seeking him out to go to that school. Well, and yeah, and they have been. I mean, Micah obviously is very good. Inaba is good. Uh, some of their men's wrestlers are, are very strong and have worked other places. So, yeah, it isn't just that it's like, oh, we have the bodies. It's like, oh, these people are actually very, you know, very talented, which is also why, you know, they're leaving and not sticking around, you know, just tap out because people want them in their promotions. Yeah. Uh, so in Stardom news, we have a couple uh, pieces of Stardom news. As I mentioned, Stardom live streamed their uh, August 29th Five Star Grand Prix show. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But a lot of news on that show. Um, one of the first things they talked about, which we'll talk about in a second, is that their matches on the New Japan shows from this weekend were uh, live streamed on New Japan World, uh, which was very exciting. It's very good to see that whatever the, you know, the TV deal that was affecting their ability to stream those matches, uh, glad that that's been sorted out in whatever way and to see those matches. Um, The second thing was uh, Hazuki has returned to stardom. She returned. Uh, unexpectedly at the show confronted Mayu Iwatani in the ring and talked about uh, the fact that she noticed that stardom is bringing in a lot of outside talent to fill up their roster. They have not had many rookies, uh, which is true. And we've talked about that on this show, Uh, but she has come back. Kelly, what do you think about Hazuki back in stardom? Well, I think it's confirmed that Hazuki listens to this show. And uh, hello, thank you for listening. Uh, and I don't know, I was not expecting her to pop back up in stardom. I figured if she did come back to wrestling, it'd be somewhere else just because of how she was seemingly forced out. But like, it, it was cool to see her back. I'm glad she's back in wrestling. Yeah, I am also glad she's back in wrestling. I had talked about um, on the Hanakamura memorial show that she had really impressed and i hoped uh she'd be back i was looking um for her to work other places just so to you know to see to have some new sort of uh fresh matchups outside of stardom but i'm very happy to see her back in stardom i'm happy to see her wrestling again because i think that she's super talented and you know i think she's a great get uh or get back uh, for stardom to have um, a super talented wrestler, one of my favorites. So it will be interesting to see where how she slots back in a company that's fairly different than when she left, if she goes back to Oedo Tai or if she ends up uh, somewhere else or maybe doing her own thing in her own uh, unit. Yeah, I would I would say you give her her own unit at this point, but like I would also like to see her jump into Wedotai and just take it over. Bring it back to what it used to be. 
Yeah, they could they could use the help, although I think they have, I mean, really the one good step that they've made with Oedo Tai is putting Starlight Kid in there, yeah. I think has really helped. But uh, we've talked up on this show about uh, the struggles with Oedo Tai. You know, it would be interesting to see if, you know, if they put Hazuki back in there, my one thing would be, you know, I, I wouldn't want to cool her off by putting her in there and then it's like, oh, it's still not back. And then all of a sudden she's sort of stuck in this group that's spinning its wheels. Um, but we'll see. And also, you know, it may be a slow burn story with, you know, the promotion in the middle of the five star Grand Prix. So uh, just something else to uh, watch out for uh, moving forward in stardom. Uh, stardom also the the final announcement they have they had teased an announcement on the show that was live streamed uh, we thought it was the new japan news then we thought possibly it was azuki coming back but there was a third uh, big announcement that stardom will be running osaka joe hall in october i believe october 9th they will be running osaka joe hall so that is the biggest I believe the biggest venue they've ever run, because uh, Budokan is 14,000 something, and I believe Osaka Joe Hall is 16,000. Um, that sounds right. I don't know what the capacity allowance is for Osaka Joe Hall, if they're doing half um, or less than half or more than half, uh, but hopefully we'll be Stardom's uh, biggest show ever attendance wise i think the budokan show if i remember right did 3200 or something like that um so we'll see what's on that show i would assume that it may be thinking of the schedule it may be the winner of the five-star grand prix is it wrapped up by then i would have to check i think so Um, but also will be interesting to see if uh maybe they have some other people on it you know on the budokan show they had the rumble with the outside talent uh big question will be can Kyrie hojo somehow work her way into that show i don't think her situation is any different than it was a few months ago no. but i would have to assume the promotion running these shows they might think that at some point they're going to be able to get her in my head, I just picture Kyrie like chained up to a laptop with a microphone, and every now and then they shock her and like, all right, it's time to do commentary for main event. Yeah, and I don't need they they announced uh, this week that they had disbanded NXT uh, Japan. We did it. I think we did it, I America. Think, yeah, which I think was the company that helped run the their. Um, touring shows in japan i think i don't know if it was fully the nxg japan but it's it's good to hear that nxg japan uh which seemed like it wasn't going to happen is not happening uh, another triple h all, plan fails yeah, with love all to the see it. issues with uh nxt proper going on uh certainly interesting yeah. but i would um, assume you for osaka joe hall I think you have to run the Utami Siri title match. Utami Siri? Yeah. Oh, I was thinking it would be Utami. I, I have always felt that Julia is going to win the five star and it's going to be Utami Julia and Julia wins the red belt. That could be. I just, I feel like they've set, they've built this Utami Siri match so much now and we'll get into that more later but like i think that's that's the match you go with for me at least Hmm. especially with how on the uh new japan shows they it seems like they expressly told kevin kelly to talk that match up yeah i just don't know how much of that match like being good was a shock and it was like oh we'll just plug this match because it was a big hyped match and it's great. And then, of course, they got a little boost out of the fact that they then faced each other this weekend in the Five Star Grand Prix. I just have always felt like it's clear that they want Julia at the top of this company. And 
I think Utami at this point has had a reign long enough that taking the title off of her is not a wouldn't be seen as oh you're ju- you know you're jumping the gun. Yeah, she's had the belt for a good while now. And I just don't know if Shuri is I think if you were to do it again, it's almost like Shuri would have to win in my mind. I mean, I guess they could go again and Utami wins, but then you're sort of like, okay, two draws and, well, like two and a half draws. And <laughs> um, like then, I don't know, Shuri wins. I don't know if they, she's obviously very talented, but I don't know if the company sees her at that level of like, we need to put the title on her to establish her. It feels like she's sort of an established commodity as it is. She has the SWA title, which she can defend against really now that she's opened this new sort of rule. She can defend it against a lot of people. But uh, we'll see. I have a feeling that in two weeks, when we come back to do the show, there's going to have been a lot of uh, five-star Grand Prix stuff that will happen. And we may have a better look at sort of who's got a chance to win win the whole thing. Yeah, everything should be a lot clearer by then. Uh, and finally, the final piece of news, another piece of, of uh, stardom news from their September 4 show, uh, former Actress Girls wrestler Waka Tsukiyama um, debuted in the promotion, and she uh, is debuting in the way a lot of wrestlers are seemingly debuting nowadays. <laughs> she is getting a Future of Stardom uh, title match against Unagi Saika, who told her, don't even think about trying to get in Cosmic Angels. Um, so, Kelly, uh, I know that you've seen some uh, Waka from her time in Chaco Pro. Are you looking forward to her in stardom? How do you feel? I like her. So I'm, I don't know, I'm happy that she's getting a little shine here. I think she needs, still needs a ton of work. She's still pretty limited in the ring but she's got some personality so i think i think it's a good pickup for stardom but again i don't i have no idea where you slot her in the company like she's gonna be way lower card just because she needs the work still yeah i'm i think it's so fascinating to me that it it feels to me like obviously stardom has not debuted anyone out of their dojo in a while they have lady c who lady c now is in sort of a strange position where she is still sort of a rookie but it feels like and she was on the one of the uh, new japan shows but it feels weirdly like there's not really a lot of focus on her it doesn't feel you know i feel like a lot of times in stardom and other promotions you know they day rookies debut and there is sort of a natural focus on them because of it's like okay we want to see what happens with this person and it just feels like she's been so pushed down by all these sort of debuts who are sort of at her level like it feels like they're just debuting rookies from like they just wait for other rookies to debut in companies and they're like oh come work for stardom it saves us the time of having to develop people in our own dojo and then we have rookies but it just feels weirdly like lady c has been covered up by the fact that it's like oh you're a rookie but also we have all these other rookies who come in and they get storylines and they get you know title shots and they get challenge series series uh (laughs) it's series challenge what is what What's the plural of multiple series? I think it's just I think it's just series. Series? But I think with like uh, an apostrophe at the end. Okay. Well, uh, anyway. <laughs> um, so it's just a strange... And like I said, um, with the Tokyo Joshi stuff, at least I'm someone who I enjoy watching someone start in a company, grow with a company. You know, there's nothing wrong with switching companies, but... I think there is a connection that you get with someone who grows in one single company that you can't get with someone who switches 
from one company to another because it isn't the same. You're not saying, oh, I saw your first, you know, some people may have seen, you know, what some of Waka's early matches because you can see actress girls uh, places. But if you're a stardom fan, all of a sudden it's someone you've never really seen before and you have to sort of develop that connection in a different way. So it's interesting. Uh, We'll see as we hopefully come out of this period um, as more people in Japan get vaccinated to see if maybe the stardom dojo bounces back and they start debuting people again, or if this is sort of the method of development going forward. I think an underrated part of the pickup of Waka is she has really good English. And I think that's perfect for a company like Stardom that is looking more and more and more at international expansion and getting into the English speaking markets and stuff. And like, that's why I thought she was great in Choco Pro because they focus a lot on the English language audience. So she was great. She could just cut English promos and everything was great with that. So having her in Stardom is probably a, is a really good pickup for them when they're trying to, you know, they do the translated promos and stuff and, I think that's good to have someone around that can just speak English. She can be the, um, like pretty much what Yappy does in Ice Ribbon. Yeah, that's very true. I didn't even, uh, I didn't even think about that, but yeah, that is very true. And I always, uh, think it's super helpful. I mean, Yappy is very helpful for Ice Ribbon and in Choco Pro having, uh, the English speakers having Aki, and things like that is very helpful. So yeah, that is a definite sort of side benefit to to this pickup. But we'll see. Maybe you know, we'll see if maybe she gets a, a challenge series as uh, May Sakurai's will be coming to an end. I think she's got, I think match three, four, and five in the next coming two weeks or something. So that should be ending soon. And maybe we'll see another one. And maybe you know these sort of Opening cards are just a rotation of these uh, challenge series uh, for the younger for the younger wrestlers. Yeah, and going back to Lady C, imagine how much like lower, I guess even lower down the card or down just like booking pecking order she would be if she wasn't as tall as she is. Because I feel like if she didn't have that going for her, they would just be doing nothing with her. Yeah, I was, um, frankly, I was very surprised to see her on the uh, announce for the New Japan shows. Because as I said, it just feels like sort of like she hangs out. She does the opening matches. She loses a lot. And there there just isn't much connection there. Now they may be waiting for, I, but I don't know. It's like. Well, you could be waiting, but if you're continually <laughs> signing someone every month, when is the time when you're like, okay, now it's time for Lady C? I yeah. don't know. Yeah, the New Japan booking, see, it made sense to me because it's like, she's pretty solid in ring. She can take a loss and it doesn't matter. And she's got a striking look that for your non-stardom fans will be like, oh, look at her. She's, she's real tall. So, like, I think that makes sense for her choice in the match. Yeah, and I think, and we'll talk about those New Japan matches shortly. I think those New Japan matches are very, I think I think they're interesting. Uh, I'll leave it at that, and then we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. <laughs> uh, but the stardom shows that happened in the last few weeks, uh, we won't go... Uh, deep dive into all the matches, but we'll we'll cover all the shows. The first one was August 28th in Nagoya. Uh, Tom Nakino defeated Lady C uh, in a uh, non-tournament uh, match. Uh, Utami defeated Mei Sakurai in the beginning of her seven-match series. The five-star Grand Prix matches were Natsupoi defeating Fukigen Death. Konami defeating Ruaka, Starlight Kid defeating Mina, Sh- Mina Shirakawa, Mika versus Unagi Saika going to a 20-minute time limit draw, and Mayu Iwatani defeating Hibika uh, getting involved now in the 
five star Grand Prix. Kelly, overall, what'd you think of the show? Anything that stood out to you? Matches that you really enjoyed? Matches you maybe didn't enjoy? What'd you think? Uh, I thought the show overall was all right. Nothing blew me away. Uh, I will say, Konami versus Ruaka is one of the worst matches I've seen this year. I hated this match. Ruaka is just awful. She's just so bad. Her selling did not exist in this match at all. To the point where Konami just shoot kicked her in the head and got nothing out of her. Like, I don't, I don't know what was happening. This was horrible. Now, you told me that you had messaged me that before I watched the match. And so I think that probably helped because I finished and I was like, yeah, that was, it was a match. Um, but probably you had lowered my expectations to where I watched <laughs> it and thought, well, we'll go, you know, I was expecting I just, like, I mean, obviously we know that mine was the Unagi, uh, my, uh, Sakurai match, which I just thought was not good at all. Yeah. Um, but I'm like, it's better than, you know, it's better than that. It's better than some of the thing, you know, some other things I've watched recently. So I, I think I was prepped. Um, but I think I felt largely the same as you. I thought that the top three matches were all pretty solid. Um, good. You know, Starlight Kid has been very good since return. Although, as people know who have listened to this podcast, I've been saying it for a long time that Starlight Kid has been underrated. And now she's made the turn and people are all about Starlight Kid. And I was right and I was first on that train. Yep. Yeah, um, she's really just come into her own working as a heel and just... A lot of her offense just looks really vicious. I'm super happy with her as a heel. But I think that's the case with a lot of people in stardom, which is that if you give them focus and you give them something that more than just, hey, go out there and have a good match, they will shine. I think there's numerous people, you know, I think that was sort of the way with Konami when she turned and joined Oedo Tai, but they didn't really follow up in the way that they have followed up with Starlight Kid. And so I think you sort of lose it. It's like you have to, you know, get the momentum going, but you can't then stop. You can't make one decision and then stop. I think they've done a good, they've done very well with Starlight Kid, sort of. She turned. Then they had the the one-on-five match with Mayu where she said, no, I don't want to go back to Stars. And as we'll talk about in a second, now she wins a title. And I think that they've done a really good job sort of building, putting the steps, the building blocks up to really make this feel like a big deal. Yeah, she and she really just, it's not like she's just coming out there and being like, look, I'm cartoon bad guy. It's like she it, again, she's a lot kind of the same character, but just an edge to her. She's still that underdog. She's also a giant asshole. So like, I really, really like what they're doing with her. And I. I kind of assume a lot of that is her own doing just based on how stardom kind of books and doesn't give people characters. <laughs> yeah. And, and I'll talk about more in a second. She had another uh, great match coming up. I also enjoyed uh, Micah and Sayaka, even though, you know, during the tournament, I'm much more amiable to time limit draws because it's part of the booking. It's part of the strat, you know, getting points. I wasn't bothered by that. I wasn't crazy about these two going to a time limit draw, although I thought the match was pretty solid. Micah had some accidental blood, which I thought really gave the match an edge. Um, but that was really the other the other match on the card that stuck out to me. Yeah, the... There was a point in the Maiko uh, Unagi match where I think it was like probably about nine minutes in. I just sat there. I was like, this is going to a draw, isn't it? And I looked at the results and I was like, yep, sure enough. They're doing a draw. <laughs> it just it very much felt like in the middle point there. They're like, all right, we need to fill here. And then it got saved by uh, Micah getting her mouth busted open. Uh, the next show, Stardom, on August 29th from Tokyo. This show was live-streamed on YouTube. I won't go too much into it. I've done it already on this show enough. They live-streamed the show. It went off very, very well at the height. 
I was sort of checking the number on YouTube. I think just over 18,000 people were watching the stream. And I'm hoping with this streaming, the New Japan shows being streamed live, not being shown later or not shown at all. I'm hoping that they are moving towards a more live stream friendly system outside of sort of their big shows, which they put on pay-per-view. And because currently they, on YouTube, it's sitting at 211,000 views. So it has interest. And I think that, as I've said so many times, they should be live streaming. I saw some people say, well, I don't like this format as much as I do the format that gets uploaded on Stardom World. I love this format. I yeah. love that I wasn't having to, you know, the thing that always sort of, it's, psychological for me i think in that i love watching a show live going on twitter seeing people going oh i'm liking this what do you think about this blah 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 here's my thoughts i'm not having to you know four days later okay we've uploaded one match okay great i can go watch that match okay now i have to wait another day for another match you just sit and you watch you know you watch yeah. the whole show i'm not bothered by um single camera streams because that's like new japan world when it launched that was like 70 percent of the shows were single cam streams so i think i'm used to that um but i think if you like the format on stardom world you can keep waiting but they should live stream these shows yeah i really i don't like the upload schedule for stardom world like i just i want to watch all the show at once if I'll, sure, I'll watch, like, if there's a hot man event, you upload that right away, cool. I'll watch that, especially if it's around the time for this show. But I would rather, even if I just have to, like, wait a day and there's all of it, I would prefer that. Yeah, I just think that just waiting the time and watching something four days. I mean, wrestling happens so fast now that there's yeah. shows all the time. You can see all these different promotions. There's always things going on that saying, oh, yeah, this show, it happened four days ago. And now here's the show. It just. I think when you watch something live, it makes it feel like higher stakes than. Oh, definitely. Watching it. Four days later when you're like, okay, all the results are out. A lot of times, unless you avoid Twitter completely, you know, you see the results. So you already know half the results of the match, you know, things like that. So I am a proponent of live stream. Everyone else seemingly is doing it. Yeah, that's the it thing is. where it's like, it's not like this is some super hard technology that only like new japan has access to everyone does this yeah so i mean my fingers crossed that as i said the new japan streaming this streaming is some sign of and i'm also not saying that they should put every show on youtube for free that's not what i mean when i say oh they should live stream the show i'm just saying they have stardom world they should figure out some way to live stream the shows on stardom world yeah like and if it means they have to dump the current stardom world that they have and start fresh it'd probably be worth doing and it isn't like they haven't already done that a couple times so they yeah been, you know they have done it um i wonder if they would ever consider doing because now that youtube has like their membership thing again if they would consider going back there like they did years ago i don't know although i didn't know that youtube did that come back, the membership thing? Because last time it happened, then all of a sudden it was taken away randomly, and then it was like, whoops. Yeah, well, it is a Google thing, so anytime anyone likes it, it goes away. <laughs> but like, I think they've just recently started bringing that back, because I've seen some channels I follow talking about, oh, you can sign up for the membership and get exclusive access to these videos. It's like, oh, okay, so this they're doing this again, huh? Hmm. All right. Well, something to keep an eye on. I thought a year ago when, or a year and a half ago at this point, when they live streamed that No People Gate show, I thought that that was the beginning of maybe them live streaming the shows and it didn't happen. So uh, I guess we'll have to wait and see. Uh, but the 829 show, uh, the results, Azumi defeated Hannon. 
in a non-tournament match. Momo Watanabe defeated Mei Sakurai in her second challenge match. And I do have to say, Mei Sakurai uh, looked a lot better this weekend than she did in her first uh, that Future of Stardom title match. Helps going against two of the better wrestlers really yeah, in the that's, whole world. That's maybe why we shouldn't just like <laughs> put the really just not trained... I can't talk right now. Trained up wrestlers up against each other. Like I get putting two rookies, you know, in there like for the essentially the young lions match or whatever. But like, I don't know. The future of stardom title just has that problem where it's like, eh, it's probably not going to be great. <laughs> yeah. And it started from, it's like, oh, it didn't look great. She looked good here. But as I said, if she hadn't looked good here, we'd have a big problem because <laughs> If you can't get a, at least a decent match with, you know, Momo Watanabe and Utami, then uh, you're in trouble. Yeah, I didn't uh, care much for the Utami match. Like, looking at my notes, what I said was, well, she seems to be trying. Mai is bad. Um, also on the show, Five Star Grand Prix uh, match, Fukigen Death defeating Himika. So uh, an upset there. They had another Future of Stardom title match. Asaika successfully defending her title against Rina. They had Mayu Iwatani against Lady C. Non-tournament match, of course. Mayu and was then... so mean to Lady C in this match. But she was, like, being mean, but also having a good time. Yeah. <laughs> she was, like, laughing with the crowd. She was like, isn't this funny? <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course... Maybe that was purposeful for when Hazuki comes out to really have a contrast of uh, of attitude. Oh, yeah, that would make sense. You uh, know, yeah, now we, that we... Lady C should be with with uh, Hazuki. Because with Hazuki talking about all the outsiders coming in, she should like kind of join up with the person who has been with the company from their beginning and just hasn't really gone anywhere in the company yet. Like, that makes perfect sense. That is that is true, and I am wondering, you know, if you start... I feel so bad because I'm like, who from Stars could leave Stars and go to uh, Hazuki? As if they don't lose someone, like, every two weeks. Yeah. Someone's like, I'm out of here. I'm it's like, just hey, Mayu in a that. room by herself, like, all right, time for the party. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, well, Lady C definitely could be, and that would solve the issue that we talked about a little a little bit ago of that it doesn't feel like she's doing much of anything. Hazuki, I know you're listening to the show. Book it. Uh, Takumi Aroha getting her first points of the uh, five-star Grand Prix, defeating Micah in the semi-main. And then the main event was a high-speed title match. Starlight Kid defeating Natsupoi in 16 minutes and 59 seconds. A title change. And what I thought was a very excellent match. I think I went four and a quarter. Uh, if I remember correctly, but I just thought, obviously, uh, two very talented wrestlers. You know, I think Natsupoi's in a bit of a strange position where she's obviously very talented, uh, very talented wrestler. This match sort of met my expectations of being very good, but it feels like she sort of feels as she did in Tokyo Joshi, where she's a good wrestler. She has good matches. She had those matches with uh, Miyu Yamashita in Tokyo Joshi, but she feels almost completely non-vital to this promotion. Yeah. Like, I like Natsupoi a lot, because, like, I know I, I don't know where I've said... I've said this before, but, like, the no-hands cartwheel thing is one thing that every time I see it, I'm like, that's amazing. How, how do you do that? How does your body defy gravity like that? Like, every time, it always impresses me. I've seen it hundreds of times by now, but every time, I'm like, that's so cool. So it's like she'll always be like one of the my favorite wrestlers in stardom just for that. Uh, I really hope that she and Starlight Kid are just kind of career rivals because they're so good together. Like, I loved this match. I went four stars on it. I thought it was great. I think I liked they had a match earlier this year, I want to say that I think I liked more, but this was really good. So that was the two. Uh, 
stardom shows from last weekend. Also, uh, this weekend, they had a show, but they had two matches on the New Japan shows in the MetLife Dome. The first match, Momo Watanabe and Saya Kamatani defeating Lady C and Micah in 12 minutes and 2 seconds. And on the 5th, Julia and Shuri defeating Momo Watanabe and Saya Kamatani in 11 minutes and 31 seconds. Kelly, what did you think of these two matches on the New Japan shows? I enjoyed them both quite a bit. Um, I will say the second one I preferred a whole lot more like i i went four stars on that one it was just kind of constant action i loved it uh i i forgot that like julia and siri do like a wacky tag team for whatever reason <laughs> but it works i guess but yeah that match was awesome just constant go 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 from start to finish and uh in the first one i thought uh i thought lady c looked really good like she did really well for being what is it? She's not even a year in. She's like six, seven months in or something. I thought she did really well. I and I thought the the company came off really well in both matches. And I'm glad we actually got to see them. Yeah, I'm glad we got to see them too. I don't think I was high on... I also think the second one was better than the first. I, but I wasn't quite as high as you. I thought they were both solid uh, matches. You know, it's sort of hard to send people out on the sort of opening... Uh, of a show you know people aren't all that invested you know it's a different company they're there to see new japan but i thought that they did a good job and everyone looked uh good and uh did well the english commentary was uh working hard to really sort of hype up stardom hype up these wrestlers they seem genuinely excited to be watching the matches, which I think was good. And so overall, you know, a positive. I don't think either match for me was one to, you know, I would say, oh, go out of your way to watch. I think partially just because of the atmosphere, it's it's felt felt very much like sort of an opening match. But overall, very good efforts from everyone and solid matches. It's the most New Japan I've watched in a while. Uh, Me too, and I will say... (laughs) You know, for for everything going on in in stardom, uh, reading some of the uh, because I was sort of looking at uh, opinions from the New Japan show to see what people thought of the stardom matches. And there was, you know, people are not happy with new. Many people are not happy with New Japan right now. So uh, it seems like an interesting time for that company. But I'm glad that they're showing off stardom and that the matches are now making air. I wonder if this opens the possibility for stardom being absorbed by New Japan World, kind of like how Wrestle Universe is. Um, yeah, I just think that if they would have done that, it probably would have already, I just feel like they might have already just done that. Maybe, but it might have been blocked by the same deal that kept the stardom matches off when they did the dark matches for New Japan. Yeah, it could be. I mean, well... As I said, whatever gets these shows to be live, if they aired the same way that the New Japan shows aired, I mean, that would be great for me. And I would be ecstatic to be able to watch the shows live or, you know, watch the show, you know, even if it's not live to wake up the next day, you know, because often these shows are airing in the middle of the night here in the States to wake up the next day and say, oh, I can watch the whole show right now. Great. Perfect. Yeah, I'd be into that for sure. Even if they would be like, hey, now New Japan World is like 12 bucks instead of 10 I'd be fine with that. It's fine with me because I would be saving money from having to pay, you know, whatever the... I don't even remember what it is for Stardom World, but... Um, I think it's like 8-something. Yeah, may, yeah, that would work for me. So, uh, <laughs> again, whatever gets them live, uh, I'm good with. Uh, and then Stardom had had their own show on the 4th in Tokyo, uh, a five-star Grand Prix show. Fukigen Death pinned Hanan. Mayu Iwatani defeated Rina. Unagi Saika and Natsupoi went to a double countout in a non-tournament match. 
Julia defeated Mai Sakurai in her challenge series. And then three five-star Grand Prix matches, Himika defeating Mina Shirakawa, Konami pinning Takumi Aroha, and in the main event, the big rematch, Utami and Shiri going to a 20-minute draw. Uh, Kelly, I know that you watched the main event of the show, the 20-minute draw. What did you think? I thought it was great. Uh, it was Honestly, from the time the bell rang, it was obvious this was going to go to time limit, just based on how their previous match went. Because I don't think you're going to blow off this match and give a winner here with the 20-minute time limit. Uh, The whole match was super intense, hard-hitting, as you would expect it to be. The spot that really just I can't get out of my brain is when uh, Siri took that powerbomb onto the apron but only her head hit and holy shit. It looked like it hurt. I don't know that it was supposed to be a power bomb onto the apron. I think it might've been, it was supposed to be a power bomb onto the floor. Oh, okay. And they were too close to the, apron. Jeez. Um, but it's a running theme because they had that thing in their um, first match, the, the suplex, where she hit her head on the back of the on the back of the apron. That's right. Yeah. And so I don't know. Maybe it's just a thing. They're like, we got to, you know, it could be sort of like a callback to Shuri getting uh, her head dropped on the apron. Maybe the next match they'll just do the uh, BJ Whitmer, Jimmy Jacobs spot with just the <laughs> power bomb off the top onto the apron. <laughs> Yeah, but that was the spot that stood out to me as well because I was like, oh my God. And the fact that it's now happened twice and Siri's like, yep, keep going. Like, yeah. seemingly, I don't know, maybe she went to the back and she's like, ah. But <laughs> seemingly just went on with the match and was like, no, oh, I'm fine. That's got to just be adrenaline. But then I was going to say, it got to be just be adrenaline. But then she wrestled just fine the next day in New Japan. So it's like, I guess she was all right. Yeah, but just, you know, I think it would have been hard for them to top um, their first match, obviously under different circumstances in a bigger venue. Uh, but I thought it was a really good match as well. So um, that's the only match I've seen. I think it's the only match you've seen from the show, right Kelly? Yeah. I have I haven't seen if they've uploaded anything else yet. Yeah. Cause they were uploading. I think they may have now just put everything up. Cause I think I checked right before the show and things are up, but, Oh. Unfortunately, did not get a chance to watch any of those other matches. No, uh, but the post-match but... promo from that is really what made me think that they are going to do the the final rematch or whatever at the Osaka Joe Hall show. Just kind of how they set up Siri wants Utami to win the tournament and then nominate her as the challenger or something. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Because I don't think I think I didn't see the promo. Okay, because yeah, they're both agreed. They're down the road. They're doing a no time limit match. Yes. Well, that <laughs> that makes sense. Um, but we'll see if maybe. Yeah, I guess I guess we'll see. And as I said, I think in two weeks uh, I'm about to go through the standings, and it's still very much. Very muddled. There's no one who's been knocked out yet or eliminated from contention technically yet. Um, But I think in two weeks we'll have a much stronger view of who's got a chance and who does not. Uh, So speaking of those standings, I'll just run down them quickly or I'll run up them. Uh, The blue stars at the bottom of the rankings is Ruaka. She has zero points. She has six matches remaining. Uh, tied at two points, Azumi and Takumi Aroha. Aroha has seven matches left, the most in the block, uh, although Azumi has six. Sayaka Matani by herself at four points. She has five matches remaining. Uh, at five points, four people tied Konami, Unagi Sayaka, Utami, and Shuri. Um, Konami and Unagi have four matches left. Utami and Shuri have five matches left, so a little bit of a benefit for them. Tom Nakino at six points, but only has four matches left. And then Micah is currently leading with seven points, but she only has two matches remaining. 
on her schedule, so it may be tough for her to win. She's only one point ahead of Tom Nakino, but Tom has two additional matches. So Micah's uh, point total top, the best that she can do is 11 points. So technically Ruaka could <laughs> is not going to, but could catch her if she wins all six of her remaining matches because she would have 12 points. Uh, Micah can only get to 11 this so is the said, weirdest laid out tournament ever. <laughs> <laughs> right? That I'm like, ah, oh, we're, you know, and also part of it was that they were affected by can- having to cancel shows. They were supposed to have a show on the 5th, a full show for them. That was canceled. They canceled some shows in August, which I think also sort of threw uh, some of this off. But it does feel weird that it feels like we've been in this tournament for quite a long time. And it's like, well, no one's eliminated yet. Yeah. And like Aroha still has seven matches. <laughs> Uh, The Red Star standings, there's no one with no points, although there are five people all with two points currently. Saki Kashima, Koguma, Momo Watanabe, Fukigen Death, and Himika. Uh, Saki Kashima and Himika have six matches left. Fukigen Death has five, but Koguma and Momo Watanabe both have seven matches left, so still a lot of matches for them. Am I safe in assuming that Kogumo was one of the people that caught COVID because she's kind of just disappeared from the company for a bit? Um, It could be. And the fact that she was around at the beginning, you know, Aroha didn't have matches near the beginning as I think she was busy with other things. So that makes sense. And I know that Momo was affected. She got that injury that she had to miss a couple of shows, but then those shows I think were canceled. So it could be that Koguma did get it, or it could just be that she had a lot of matches on those shows and those happened to be the shows that were canceled. That could be too. But yeah, but she hasn't, I don't think I've, she's been on a single show since. Yeah. Cause she wasn't on. Yeah, that is true. Um, Yeah, but I guess it could just be the way that the shows are laid out, and I don't know exactly how I would have to go through and look. It goes to my theory that uh, Rossi just takes a whole bunch of, like, magic sheet bones and throws them against a calendar and makes the schedule that way. Yeah, so we... uh, But she has seven matches, so we'll be seeing her uh, a lot coming (laughs) coming up. Uh, Seven matches, her and Momo. Four points, uh, Mina and Julia both have five matches remaining. Natsupoi by herself at five points. She has four matches remaining. Mayu Iwatani at six points with five matches remaining. And Starlight Kid leading the block with seven points, although she only has four matches remaining, so less matches than Mayu Iwatani. So still... Uh, a whole lot to play for. No one eliminated. Lots of matches coming up. I will also say that um, in between our recording of this episode and the release of the episode, Stardom has another show. So it has not happened yet, uh, but it will have happened by the time that this show airs. Uh, and it is a big Corkin Hall show, a very jam packed Corkin Hall show with 10 matches. Jeez. Um, Micah versus May Sakurai as part of May Sakurai's challenge series. The Unagi Saika Waka Sukiyama Future of Stardom title match, and then eight five star Grand Prix matches: Himika and Natsupoi, Starlight Kid and Koguma, Shuri and Konami, Tom Nakino and Takumi Aroha, Sayaka Matani and Ruaka, Momo Watanabe and Fukigen Death. And Momo Watanabe and Saki Kashima <laughs> and Julia and Mina Shirakawa. So this, I think, one of those shows where they're getting some of those missed matches on the on the card. I really hope they do both of those Momo matches back to back. Big disadvantage for her to be, I believe, the only person on the card uh, wrestling twice. Just to have her demolish both of them. <laughs> just like two minutes each why not go for it uh so that is lots of stardom news big lots of things happening in stardom lots of things possibly happening in stardom 
Uh, but there have been a lot of other things happening all around the world of Joshi. Uh, Seedling had a show on September 3rd, not one of their bigger shows. It was at Shinkiba, First Ring, uh, Arisa, Nakajima, and Yu winning in the main event against Rina Yamashita and Ryo Mizunami. Yu and Mizunami have a title match upcoming. Um, Oz did a, a mini one-day tournament to decide the new number one contender. The final match of that will be held at their September 12 show, which we'll talk about in a second. And the main event was a plasma bet death match, um, exploding death match. That will be on their Maho cast streaming on September 10th. Uh, so one to look out for. They had the Os- the usual Osaki Goon versus, you know, Aja Kong and Hiroyu Matsumoto in that death match at the Hell main yeah. event, which seems like a really exciting match, and I'm looking forward to watching it. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Hopefully this time the uh, finish of the match won't be, like, blocked by a little inset box. <laughs> Or no, that was the zero one show that the Uzaki That was, doing. but it was the it was an exploding that was yeah. an exploding uh, bat match, <laughs> which had a lot of Oz talent in it. Um, the uh, Tokyo Joshi has had a number of matches. On the twenty eighth, they had a show for their fan club, which was a sort of wacky fun show. They had a costume change match. Had a lot of wrestlers wearing. Uh, the gear uh, of other people, um, you had Palm Harajuku as Miyu Yamashita, you had Mizuki as Yuka Sakazaki, lots of fun there. Uh, speaking of Yuka Sakazaki, she and now Kakuda had an athletic match, which involved a three-legged race, uh, like eating bread um, <laughs> at one point. Um <laughs> Very weird to describe this on this podcast. You know, athleticism, uh, eating bread. You know. And Miyu Yamashita joined uh, the Up Up Girls for one show, uh, wore her old gear so she that she could fit in more. Uh, Tokyo Joshi had a show in Kobe on the 29th, which was a Mizuki homecoming show. And then they had a show on the 4th. Uh, that was the final show for Mirai Mayumi. She said farewell. She whispered something to Suzume. We don't know what she whispered. Maybe we will find out one day. And then in the main event, Yuki Aino uh, and Marika Kobashi defeated Miyu Yamashita and Maki Ito. Big controversy as Ito claims that she wants to face the strongest version of Miyu Yamashita when they face off for the title. And with Yamashita losing to Aino, uh, she is, Ito believes that Yamashita is weaker and is very upset. So that is something uh, to keep an eye out for as they head towards their title match. Uh, Sendai Girls had their show, Andres Miyagi and Hibiki winning in the main event there. That'll be interesting as it looked like that Miyagi and Hibiki team was going to become some sort of uh, team, but with Hibiki leaving Marvelous, we'll see what happens there. Uh, Ice Ribbon had their Cork and Hall show on August 28th. Wave had a show on September 1st. The big news there, Osaki Goon making an appearance, coming over from Oz Academy, making an appearance in Wave. And Kelly, what has been happening in the world of Choco Pro? All right, so on Choco Pro 148, it was the fourth generation second anniversary show. So a bunch of their wrestlers from that era took uh, had matches. Uh, Chan Shiryu defeated Siri in a really good match, uh, easily Siri's best match. Uh, I put it at three and a half stars. Uh, Masa Takanashi defeated Tokiko Kirahara. Uh, that was that was all right. Uh, and then in the main event, uh, Che Koshikawa defeated Sayaka and kind of just like a clash of people from that generation. Uh, good match overall. Uh, I enjoyed that show quite a bit. Uh, then on Choco Pro 149, they had their summer party, which led to the most unhinged Choco Pro show in quite some time. Uh, the first match was a watermelon match where... Uh, 
Mesa Ruga wrestled uh, Rina Amikura. And to win the match, you had uh, your opponent had to break a watermelon. So they just had like a watermelon in the middle of the ring. And it was pretty, it was a lot like the, uh, uh, the DDT match from like two years ago with the light tube with Asuka and uh, Akito. And it ended with May putting the watermelon on top of Rena's head and running her into the wall to bust the watermelon open. Uh, the next match was a uh, triple threat where the remote control for the uh, air conditioning was hung from the ceiling. All of the windows and doors were sealed shut, and so everyone was just melting for the entirety of the match. Uh, it got to the point where uh, May was running the camera, and she started beating up everyone to try and win, but she was too short to reach the controller. And then in the main event, it was a battle royal where you could only be eliminated by being tossed out of one of the windows or launched into the kiddie pool that was in the middle of the ring. Uh, lots of water guns and uh, water balloons were used in the match, thoroughly soaking the ring mat to the point where I'm pretty sure it's still it was still wet on 150 because they had to have a tarp under the mat. Uh, and it was uh, Yuna Mizumori won the match by back body dropping a kappa into the kiddie pool. It was as weird as it sounds. And yeah, then uh, doing weird things like watermelon, can't they do normal matches like competitions about eating bread? Yeah. Yeah, uh, just suspended my disbelief. Like, there's, how am I supposed to believe that a kappa could show up? That was actually funny because it was clearly Masa Takanashi who had just been doing commentary. And at one point you see his hand and he's got like f- like fins on his hand. So it's like, okay, so we know you're doing something weird later in this match. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then Choco Pro 150 uh, was all right. I kind of expected a bigger show just because like, that was an anniversary number. And you had Sayaka uh, wrestling Takanashi. Uh I have the result wrong in my phone because <laughs> Sayaka definitely did not beat Takanashi. And then uh, Best Bros defeated uh, Yuna and Chie in the main of that show. Excellent. So that is uh, the Choco Pro recap. Uh, in Pure J, they had a title change on August 29th. Cherry and Leon defeated. Hanako Nakamori and Rino Yamashita to win the tag titles. They were the long reigning tag champions for Pure J. So that is everything that has happened in the last two weeks. Coming up, of course, the first thing we have to talk about, lots of five-star Grand Prix shows, lots of five-star Grand Prix matches. Uh, They have four shows coming up. The September 11th, Julia against Natsupoi, Mayu against Fukigen Death, Momo Watanabe against Himika, Saya Kamatani against Takumi Aroha, and Utami against Azumi. Then on the 12th, Momo Watanabe against Koguma, Saya Kamatani against Mika, Tom Nakano against Azumi, Takumi Aroha against Ruaka, and Suri against Unagi Sayaka. On the 16th of September, Momo Watanabe against Mina Shirakawa, Takumi Aroha against Unagi Sayaka, Utami against Konami, Natsupoi against Saki Kashima, Sayaka Matani against Azumi, Shuri against Tam Nakino, and Mayu Iwatani against Koguma. And then on the 18th, the last show of the next two weeks, Julia against Fukigen Death, Koguma against Saki Kashima, Starlight Kid against Himika, Azumi against Takumi Aroha, Unagi Saika against Ruaka, and Mayu Iwatani against Mina Shirakawa. Lots of matches, as I said. I think in two weeks we'll have a little bit better uh, look at who is a real contender for uh, the win. Uh, the win of the block and the win of the five star uh, Grand Prix in stardom. Oz has a show coming up on September 12th. As I mentioned, 
uh, the two finalists from that number one contenders tournament, Sayori Ono and you, will face off in a number one contenders match. Tokyo Joshi has some shows coming up, although on the 10th and 14th, although nothing has been announced. Same for Sendai Girls, who has two shows coming up. One is a rescheduled show for May that is happening on September 10th, and the other is September 12th. Ice Ribbon has another cork and coming up pretty fast uh, with four title matches. The IW Juq title, Hamiko Hoshi against Sakushi, Rino Yamashita against Tekla for the Fantast Ice title, Risa Sarah and Maya Yukihi against Ram Kaichou and Micah Ozaki for the Ice Ribbon Tag Titles. Oh man, and Rebel Sukuna. Enemy explodes. That's exactly right, yeah. Uh, and that is a an excellent match I'm very much looking forward to. I think four of my, uh, maybe four of you know, my top favorite wrestlers in, in Ice Ribbon, so uh, that should be that should be a good match, and frankly, this whole... This whole uh, card sh- rocks. Yeah, this whole card looks really great. Main evented by Sukasa Fujimoto, making her ninth defense of the Infinity Ice Infinity title against Ibuku, Ibuki Hoshi, who I think is really good, and I think that's a great spot for her, and I think that she could really... Uh, Impressed in that spot, and they could have a great match. Fujimoto's been having a great year with a lot of strong matches, and I think that will be another one. Yeah, I'm excited for this show. Yes, and I'm hoping that, uh, I don't know, I have to check, but I'm hoping that maybe that one airs live. Uh, so we can check that out and possibly review it for uh, our next episode. That would be lovely. Ice Ribbon. Let's make that happen. I always say I try, you know, we try and, you know, have some variety on the show. As I said, I like variety and I like to feature different promotions because I want all these promotions to um, be, you know, for us to talk about all these promotions, get interest in these promotions. Uh, Sometimes it works out perfectly. Sometimes it doesn't just because of airing schedules and things like that. But it would be great. Uh, put out the good vibes in the world that this show airs live and that we can see it and review it on the next episode. Uh, Actress Girls has a show on September 11th. Diana is back doing dojo shows on September 12th. As I talked about very at the beginning of the show, Marvelous has that no audience show on the, on September 10th that will be streamed on their past market streaming Uh, service where they will be talking about this new system that will be happening and kelly what is coming up in chaco pro uh chaco pro 152 which i think probably should have happened by the time you're hearing this uh it is the gato move ninth anniversary show and the main event will feature uh makoto versus yuna mizamori in the main event sounds like uh sounds like a good uh, match yeah i'm excited for that one uh, and that is everything happening in the next two weeks of uh, Joshi. Kelly, do you have anything more to add? I don't think I do. I think we covered everything I saw from this week. Well, we could. a lot happened, and we covered it all. And, you know, based on everything that happened in these past two weeks, I think the next two weeks will be... Uh, might be more of the same as we find out where Mirai Mayumi is going, what, how Hazuki will be back in stardom, all of these things. So yeah. looking forward to the next two weeks. No one else leave your company. Just stay where you are for a bit. <laughs> well, if things do happen, we will uh, be tweeting about them on Twitter at JBomb Audio. Uh, or maybe I'll be tweeting about them or Kelly will tweet about them on my Twitter Tay Mambo, or on Kelly's Twitter, Comic Geek Kelly. Uh, if you're excited for the next episode, ready to hear more news, you can subscribe to us on your podcast app of choice. If that podcast app of choice is Apple Podcasts, go on there, give us a five star rating and review. We really appreciate it. Or you can donate to us at redcircle.com slash shows slash jumping bomb audio so my name is taylor and for kelly thank you for listening and we will see you next time